an apostle of Jesus Christ, also known as James the Greater, was beheaded. But he died well. As it says in Fox's Book of Martyrs, as James was led to the place of martyrdom, his accuser was brought to repent of his conduct by the apostle's extraordinary courage and undauntedness and fell down at his feet to request his pardon, professing himself a Christian and resolving that James should not receive the crown of martyrdom alone. Hence, they were both beheaded at the same time. Thus did the first apostolic martyr cheerfully and resolutely receive that cup which he had told our Savior he was ready to drink. This message is about dying well. If a man is to die well, he needs something. And that something is Jesus Christ. But specifically, he needs something that only Jesus Christ can give. And the Bible calls it patience. Patience is the ability to endure the most difficult circumstances that could ever be wielded against your soul and against your body. To remain unmoved, to not recede or flee, to stand fast amidst the most severe misfortunes and trials, and to hold fast one's faith in Christ to the end. To endure and bear ill treatments bravely and calmly. The word is hupomeno, which is the brave, calm, and steadfast courage of the Christian soul. Anyone that you've ever read about in Christian history that has died well, it is astounding because we are so different. We are moved by the fact that we are low in our bank account. They were unmoved when they were being cut to pieces. Do you see a distinction between them and us? Something's wrong here. It is completely different. It is triumphant. It is victorious. It causes everyone to gape in awe and wonder and say, what do they have? You know, if we scream as we're being led to our slaughter, that's what the world does. That's what everyone who is after the protection of their own skin and has no hope in Jesus Christ does. Let's show this world what we have. And what we have comes out when the point of the spear touches us. This is our privileged opportunity because God is depositing within us. And it's when we face trials, it's when we face suffering, it's when we face persecution that this world is able to see Jesus. And I want you to realize this is put into practice today, not in the concentration camp. You need this today. Christians, who do you put your trust in? Who is in control of your life? Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Let's consider those that immediately followed his steps. Stephen was stoned. Philip was crucified. Matthew was slain with the sword. James, the brother of Jesus, was stoned and clubbed. Matthias was stoned and beheaded. Mark was dragged to pieces. Jude was crucified. Bartholomew was cruelly beaten and then crucified. Thomas was thrust through with a spear. Luke was hung. Simon was crucified. And John was thrown into a cauldron of boiling oil and removed unscathed and then exiled to Patmos. Ignatius. Ignatius was the disciple of John. But he's been told he's going to be fed to lions in the morning. This is what Ignatius said. I care for nothing of visible or invisible things so that I may but win Christ. Let fire in the cross of the companies of wild beasts. Let breaking of bones and tearing of limbs. Let the grinding of the whole body and all the malice of the devil come upon me. Be it so, only may I win Christ Jesus. I am the wheat of Christ. I am going to be ground with the teeth of wild beasts that I may be found pure bread. Such is the burning desire that he had to suffer. He declared the lions his friends. For they were going to be the ones that would lead him into the presence of the one he loved more than anything in this natural life. What did they follow? They followed in the pattern of suffering. Is that our response? When we are issued a difficulty, when a trial comes our way, what is our response? Because if we are not showcasing that joy that comes forth when the spear touches our side, when the suffering hits us, it is meant to be a rejoicing that comes out of us. To die is gain. Don't we realize that? This is opportunity. There is something good that is taking place. However, it is not up to you to define when you do die. So even though to die is gain, to live is Christ. 
You have everything you need for life and godliness in Jesus Christ. You have everything in Jesus, and it doesn't matter your circumstances, whether you're in bonds and chains, or whether you're a free man. You have Jesus Christ. Our God is faithful. Our God is powerful. Our God is able. God is asking you to trust Him no matter how dark it appears to be. Put your hope in Him. Maintain your brave calm. Extraordinary courage is not something just for the end of this earthly journey. It is for every day along the way in the journey. This is what we esteem in our daily lives. And I want you to face it with the hoop menu of heaven. I want you to call forth all that God has deposited in you via the Spirit of Almighty God. And allow that response to be patience. A brave, calm, and steadfast courage. That's what you have. That is the inheritance of the saints of God. We can live this way, not just die this way. In every singular daily death that we must die, we can die well. It means that in every situation, we must preach the glory of Jesus Christ. In this life, you will receive persecution. It's a guarantee if you walk in Jesus Christ. Listen to me closely. To die is gain. Rejoice. Rejoice. You are privileged to suffer for the living God. And in doing so, your life will demonstrate to the onlooking world what it looks like when God invades the life of men and lives the impossible through them.